okay so uh, so it is 7 2 uh, so as i have already told you i will uh, you know uh, give you 5 minutes time to solve and then i would ask you the what answer you are getting so get on with the sums Sir, so, I have a question, question on the screen, screen share. Okay. Just a minute then, just let me unshare and then I will share it again. Are you able to see the screen now? Yes sir, your screen is visible. Okay, so, so this was the question I was uh, talking about. A signal flow graph is given to you. Okay, so, and uh, you need to find the transfer function ys by us. Four options are given to you and you need to find out which option is the correct one. Uh, so, so I, I will give you five minutes time to solve the question. At 7, 9, I will ask you what answer you are getting. So if you solve it before time, you can just unmute yourself and just say that you are getting which uh, what answer you are getting.
one minute left to go uh, any of you with the answer yet So the time is up. Anybody with the answer yet? Anu? So s plus one divided by i plus six uh, x plus six s plus two. Uh, which of the options do you think is correct? Oh, sir, B. Option B. Okay, anybody else? Sort of? No, sir. Uh, uh, haven't you studied signal flow graph or uh, what is the problem? Sir, in the formula, I'm getting something confusion. Anu is saying it is B. Okay. Okay, so let us see. Okay, so so uh, this is the standard method which I have told you. First, list down all the forward path gain that you have. Okay, so what is the what are the forward paths you have? So this is uh, look at the flow of the cursor on the screen. So one of the forward path is G one, which is one into one by S into one by S into one. Correct. This is one of the forward path. So 1 into 1 by s into 1 by s matlab 1 by s square okay so g1 equal to 1 by s square so what is the other forward path that is 1 into 1 by s into 1 into 1 so 1 by s is the other forward path gain okay so these are the two forward path gain that you have what are the loops that you have in the figure there is one loop that is minus of 4 divided by s and the other loop is minus of 2 divided by s square okay this is the other loop. What is <clears throat> so? What is uh, what is the uh, you know uh, second loop that is L two? I have said this is the second loop. You see one into minus four. Do you see the loop that I am showing in the cursor? Yes, sir. Have you considered this loop? No, sir. Okay. So the current option is actually A. That is why I was asking. Okay. So this is another loop, okay. And the third loop is one by s into one into minus two. This is the other loop. So two by minus of two by s is the other loop. So L one is minus of four by s, okay. That is this this loop uh, this uh, loop that I'm talking about. That is minus of four by s. Look at the flow of the cursor on the screen. Minus of four by s is this loop which I am indicating by my cursor. Minus of 2 by s squared is the bigger loop which you can see on the screen on which the cursor is moving right now. So this is minus of 2 by s squared. L2 is 1 into minus 4 that is this loop and L4 is 1 by s into 1 into minus 2. So these are the four loops that you have to consider while solving the sum. So now the standard uh, definition which you know of Mason's gain that is delta equal to 1 minus sum of individual loop gains plus sum of all possible gain products of two non-touching loops minus sum of all possible gain products of three non-touching loops. But in this in this problem, we don't have this non-touching loop. So we may forget about all these terms. We are left only with the first two terms, 1 minus sum of all individual loops. So 1 minus L1 minus L2 minus L3 minus L4, all the 
uh, expression that have already found in the previous slide just substitute that you will get this expression and what is delta 1 that is the part of the graph which is not touching the loop l1 so 1 minus sum of individual loops not touching the uh, the forward path 1 g1 so there are no such loops which is not you know, touching this uh, forward path all the loops are touching this forward path g1 so 1 minus 0 would give you 1 what is delta 2 that is again the part of the graph which is not touching the forward path g2 and again we see that in even if we consider g2 the forward path which is shown by the cursor this is g2 so if you consider this path also all the loops that we see in this signal flow graph are touching this path also so here also all other terms which are you know, enclosed in the brackets first bracket goes to 0 and you are left only with 1 so delta 1 and delta 2 both are 1 now we have found out delta 1 delta 2 g1 g2 you will straight forward go to the expression for Mason's gain ys by us is given by g1 into delta 1 plus g2 into delta 2 divided by delta you substitute the values of g1 expression for g1 g2 delta 1 and delta 2 you will get that ys by us is equal to s plus 1 divided by 5 s square plus 6 s plus 2 so the correct option is a so I, I was expecting that you would be answering this is a very straightforward question I was expecting that you would be answering it anyways uh, so let us go to the second question which is a good question let us see okay so this is the circuit diagram which has been given to us so this is the input voltage and the input voltage is sinusoidal voltage and this is and across these two terminals is the output voltage v0 there is a diode and a battery connected of battery of 5 volt connected in this fashion as you can see on the circuit diagram and there is a zener diode 10 volt zener diode is connected across these terminals across the output terminals so you need to find out the vi characteristics and you have to you know you don't need to, i mean you have to consider these diodes as ideal as non-ideal diodes that is you need to consider the forward voltage drop of the diode that is 0 0.7 forward voltage drop you have to consider while determining the input output characteristics of the diode so so you guys are comfortable with comp with analog electronics or no Yes, okay so try this out these are these are good question so let me give you five minutes time again so it is 715 I would ask you at 720 what answer you are getting okay
so your time is up how many uh, anybody has tried solving it anybody with the answer yet no sir one minute what about sort of or getting d okay anu says it is d sort of says no sir okay a a you are saying let me just see what is a you are saying it is a okay anybody uh, <clears throat> sort of what is the uh, what about sai uh, megha sai megha are you in the meeting okay maybe she is having some trouble i do not know okay sort of can you tell me what problem you are facing if you can just unmute yourself and just speak up I just need to know your thought thought process. No, sir, not A. Not A, okay. Sort of. Okay. Now, Kirti, can you just uh, speak up? Uh, what is your thought process? What are you thinking? Your approach towards the sum. Yes, sir. Yes, you can sir, just go ahead. Of, for positive half, diode will also conduct, and uh, zener diode will also conduct. And for negative half, only zener diode will conduct. So based on that, A can't be the answer. Zener diode will also conduct, and this diode is also conducting. You are saying? No, sir. For negative half, no. No, for positive half. First, yes, let us talk about the positive half. Then I will talk about. The negative half. First, tell me for the positive half. For the positive half, you are saying this diode is also conducting, and this diode is also conducting. This is what you are saying, right? Yes, sir. So, if this diode conducts, this D diode D is conducting. Say, okay. Say diode D is conducting. So, what is the potential at this point? Sir, potential at this point will be. the current flowing through 1 kilo ohm resistor voltage at that point minus 10 volt why are you thinking from this side see the diode is conducting right yes sir if it was a ideal diode diode conducting means it is acting in a short circuit if it is a ideal diode yes sir if the diode is ideal that means when i am saying diode is conducting it means no potential the, drop no potential drop across the diode Yes, sir. So, if it was an ideal diode, what would have been the potential at this point if the diode is conducting? So then, ten volt. Why you can't you see this battery over here? Yes, yes, sir. Five volt. Okay. So you are saying when the diode is conducting, this potential is five volt, right? Hello. But forward drop is considered so five point seven. Correct. So. if this diode is conducting and the diode is non ideal we are considering the forward voltage drop of diode this point potential at this point would be 5 plus 0.7 that is 5.7 volts correct yes sir so what is what would happen to the zener diode so it can conduct in in both the directions sir. will it conduct or no how do you model a zener diode Will it always provide ten uh, volt across these terminals? No, sir. Not when conduct. See, for Zener to maintain this ten volt, if you go through a Zener data sheet or if you have gone through a few sums, uh, few problems which appeared in gate also, there you would have seen that a minimum amount of current, which we say I Z mean. is required to flow through this zener diode to maintain this 10 volt what is the minimum amount of current that means at that current when that amount of current is flowing zener breakdown occurs 
okay that is the <clears throat> breakdown of the zener breakdown uh, phenomena occurs when that iz minimum amount of current is flowing through this zener but you see when the potential is 5 5.7 uh, volt at this point that means the zener diode has not yet gone into that zener breakdown region that means it is acting as a reverse bias diode a simple reverse bias diode it would be acting as are you getting my point yes sir so if you look at the you know vi characteristics of a diode you would see there is a region where the in the reverse direction i mean, I mean if you look at the third quadrant of vi characteristics of a diode you would find that when the current goes below beyond a certain limit then only zener breakdown will occur that that value of iz has to flow through diode to main to maintain this 10 volt or to uh, uh, to i mean for the zener, for the zener breakdown phenomena to occur if that current is not flowing through the zener diode that means zener breakdown phenomena has not occurred and it is it is simply acting as a reverse bias diode are you getting my point yes sir So now can you say? So option C. Just a minute. <clears throat> Just give me a minute. Hmm. Can you see the diagram over here? On the screen? Can you see the diagram on the screen? You see, within this region, within this region, the diode is acting as reverse bias, right? You're getting my point? Yes, sir. Only when the voltage goes, I mean, the I mean, the voltage goes beyond a certain limit, then only the zener breakdown voltage is occurring. Correct? Yes, sir. So this this is a more of an idealistic curve. There will be a small tilt in this. I mean, this is a better curve. Okay. You see a small amount of current, you know, unless and until that IZ mean reaches this value, then our breakdown will not occur. So it is operating somewhere over here. Okay. It is operating somewhere over here. So if it is operating somewhere over here, what does that mean? It means that the diode is acting as a reverse bias diode. Correct? Yes, sir. So if it is acting as a reverse bias diode, so how would you model this? It will be modeled as, as a Clipper circuit, sir. Not a clipper. I'm saying I'm I'm talking Open about the zener diode. Open circuit, correct, correct. So if it is a reverse bias diode, if it is acting as a reverse bias diode, it means it is acting as an open circuit. So now, after I have given you the greatest hint in this question, can you just tell me now what answer? Okay, you are saying it is C. Why are you saying it is C? Sir, as for What does this line signify? Can you tell me? Uh, you see one thing in all these curves, you see a straight line like this, where you see the the x coordinate and the y coordinate at the end point of the straight line is same. What does this line signify? Yes, anybody who is trying to speak, is that sort of, or is it Navkirti? Can you tell me what does this straight line signify? What does that mean? What does this straight line mean? It's constant, sir. Yes. Repeat, please. I, I I missed you. Yes, Navkirti, you are saying something. Uh, sir, I was saying slow, but. Slope, yes, slope, what, what, what slope, what, what do you mean by that? What I mean, what is the slope of this line? Tell me what is the slope of this line? One, sir. Correct. So if the slope is one, what does that mean? That V output and input are equal. Correct. So V output and V input are equal. So what can be the condition when V output and V input are equal? At what condition do you think this would happen? 
at what condition means i'm not talking about any numerical value when so when xenodiode is reversed by and and this diode is conducting d Ah, if this diode then, is conducting, then a, again you will get five volt. You will not get V zero equal to V I, right? Yes, sir. So both the uh, just a minute. Somebody is uh, just a minute. Who is this? Raghavan, can you please uh, mute yourself because you know there are a lot of noise from your background. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so what was I saying? Uh, yeah so uh -huh. so i was saying ki, when do you think v0 equal to vi would happen somebody was saying ideal condition what do you mean by ideal condition um somebody just said ideal conditions anu is saying ideal condition okay no it's not ideal condition so just look at the circuit what what intuition what does your intuition say when can v0 be equal to vi You see, if this two, Navkit, you have an answer for it. So when D is also reversed by S. So when both the paths are open, so neither this zener diode is conducting, nor this diode D is conducting. If both the diodes are not conducting, there is reverse bias. It is acting as open circuit. Then there is no path for the current to flow. As a result, there will be no voltage drop across this one kilo ohm. What you are going to get? V zero becomes equal to V I. Correct. Yes, sir. You you are understanding exactly what I am saying. Yes, sir. So what you need to find is a condition for which both of these diodes would be turned off. At that condition, V I would be equal to V zero. There will be a condition when. Okay, the rest I would ask you. So do you think uh, when? Just tell me when would this V Z ten volt occur? I mean, when would V zero? Uh, the voltage across these two terminals become ten volt. So when D is reverse biased. When D is reverse biased. Okay. When D is reverse biased, what is going to happen? When is D so, going to get? Yes. Tell me. Yeah. So D will be reverse biased for negative half cycle. Yeah, for the negative half cycle, this diode would be acting as a forward bias diode, right? The yes. diode V Z would be acting as a forward bias diode, right? See, if this point is positive and this point is negative, then Zener diode becomes forward bias. It will act as a forward bias diode, right? It is not acting as a Is it not ten volt maintaining ten volt? Yes, sir. So when would V zero be ten volt? Anybody from the audience? Uh, I mean, Raghavan, can you say? Raghavan, sir. Yes, can you tell me? Uh, when do you think that v0 would become 10 volt or do you think that v0 can never become 10 volt what do you think it will never become sir why do you say that why do you say that So at that point breakdown will occur and this diode can burn out. Which diode would burn out? So Zener. No, the Zener diode works on the Zener phenomena, right? Yes, so it conducts in both the directions. No, when it is conducting in the in this direction, in the forward direction, it will be acting as a forward bias diode. You know, maintaining a zero point seven volt across it. When it is reverse biased, and when the current through the zener diode becomes greater than the IZ mean, which I have just shown you, then then it will maintain a constant voltage across it. You see, uh, the curve which I showed you just now. Look at the curve. You see, at this point, the current can be anything. Okay, 
the current can be anything but the voltage is being maintained at this value this is vz so the zener uh, diode you know it it works on the zener phenomena itself so it is not going to burn out because zener breakdown is occurring the zener diode can be reverse biased only when the voltage vi is in the positive half cycle correct yes sir right if this point which i am showing by my cursor this point is positive and this point is negative then only the zener diode would be reverse biased right now yes, say vi is gradually increasing from zero to some value okay from zero to some value it is gradually increasing the moment the value of vi reaches 5.0 5.7 then this diode starts conducting right yes sir so just imagine vi to, to sinusoidally increase from 0 to 5.7 the voltage across zener diode has not yet not yet reached 10 volts it is gradually increasing the moment the vi becomes 5.7 this diode d becomes forward biased and this point or the potential at this point becomes clamped at 5.7 volts is this point very much clear to everybody yes sir i want this confirmation from everyone so Raghavan, do you agree with me or are you not agreeing with me? What what do you say? Yes, sir. So are you agreeing with me? Yes, sir, I agree. Okay. So, so even if you increase VI beyond 5.7 volt, this diode D would still be forward biased. Correct? Yes, sir. So if this diode D is forward bias, this point is clamped at 5.7 volt. That is, the potential at this point cannot go beyond 5.7 volt. Correct? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it. So if this point cannot go beyond 5.7 volt, that means the Zener will never go into breakdown region and this would not be able to maintain 10 volt across these terminals at any point in time. Agree with me, everybody? If you have any confusion, you can just ask me question or you can just ask me to repeat whatever you feel. Navkirti, what do you think? Is it clear to you? Yes, sir, clear. So, uh, are you convinced that this zener diode but yes. about negative region negative yeah we will we would, we would come to the negative half cycle first let us talk about the positive half cycle okay so are you convinced of the fact that the zener would not be able to maintain 10 volt across it at any point in time are you convinced with that navkirti I think, sir. Okay, let me just show you the solution itself. Okay. So this is the curve, this is the circuit that I have drawn. Okay, so this is what I was telling you that Zener breakdown phenomena will occur only when this VI, okay, this VI becomes greater than 10 volt. Okay. But you see the moment the uh, sorry v1 so the moment the potential at v1 reaches 5.77 volt this diode d1 would start conducting and this point v1 would be clamped at 5.7 volt okay so now even if you increase say if you have increased vi to 10 volts then also the diode d1 would be conducting and the potential at this point would be clamped at 5.7 volt are you getting my point Navkirti? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I am saying that VI is 10 volt. If VI is 10 volt, then D, D1, the diode D1 would still be forward biased and it will clamp the potential at this point to 5.7 volt. And there is no way by which the potential across these two terminals can go up to 10 volt. It has, it is, there is no way, there is no possibility.
and it can go up to 10 volts. Okay, this is what I have shown in this diagram over here. So, the moment D1 is conducting, the uh, v, V1 is clamped to 5.7 volt and this DZ or the Zenon diode is acting as open circuit. So, the output voltage V0 would be 5.7 volt and it will remain at that point forever. And that is what you are seeing in this option. You see, the moment v, v, uh, VI becomes 5.7 volt, it remains at 5.7 volt. Correct? Yes, sir. So, when VI was less than 5.7 volt, the Zenon diode is already acting as a reverse bias. The diode D is also acting as a reverse bias. So, there is no path for the current to flow. As a result, there is no potential drop across this resistance and V0 equals to VI. So, this is what this straight line of unity slope indicates. Correct? Yes, sir. So, now let us see what happens in the negative half cycle. So, now say this is negative and this is positive. Okay. If this is negative and this is positive, you see this diode D would be reverse bias. Do you agree with me? So can you repeat please? Look at the cursor on the screen. If this point is positive and this point is negative, I am talking about the negative half cycle. That means potential at this point on which the cursor is right now is positive and potential at this point on which the cursor is placed now is negative. Under this condition, diode D would be reverse biased. Yes, sir. So, this is how I have shown it in the picture. So, you see the positive terminal is over here, negative terminal over here. In such a case, D1 would be reverse biased. That means D1 would be off. It is acting as an open circuit. Okay, do you agree with me on this point? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, till v, VI reaches you know, this 0 0.7 volt, now you should, uh, the thing that I was staying, uh, saying the uh, few minutes back, when this terminal is positive and this terminal is negative, the diode VZ, that is Zenon diode, would be forward biased. Can you see that? That this is? Yes, sir. Can you see the diagram over here? Where is the diagram? Where is the diagram? Okay, so I think I have missed that diagram. Okay, so okay, just look at this uh, diagram itself. So this is positive, this is negative. So you see the positive terminal is connected to the anode of this Zener diode. Negative terminal is connected to the cathode of the Zener diode. Therefore, the Zener diode is acting as a, a forward bias diode with a potential drop of 0 0.7. Agree with me? Yes, sir, got it. Okay. So, so the moment VI becomes more than 0 0.7 volt, then this diode, this, uh, this Zenon diode DZ would be forward biased. And if this becomes forward biased, what is the potential at this point? What would be the potential at this point if the diode DZ is forward biased? Uh, sir, VI. How can it be VI? DZ is conducting. If DZ is conducting, what is the potential at this so point? 0 0.7. 0 0.7 volt, right? So, you see, it is not an ideal diode. So, you are saying that there is a potential drop of 0 0.7. When VI, the potential at uh, VI becomes less than uh, minus 0 0.7 volt, then the diode DZ would be short circuited and the potential at this point would be minus 0 0.7 volt. Is the concept clear? So can you repeat the last line? I am saying that if the potential at this point, if, if, if you are considering the negative half cycle and the polarity of the uh, voltage VI is as shown in the figure, then the moment VI goes below minus 0 0.7 volt or if you consider this as uh, if you consider the polarity of VI in the opposite direction, the moment VI becomes greater than 0 0.7 volt, then the diode DZ would be acting as a forward bias diode, maintaining a voltage 0 0.7 volt across it. 
yes sir got it, <coughs> got it so the main thing that i wanted to convey is when the uh, xenon diode is forward biased then it is acting like a simple you know signal diode having a uh, for forward voltage drop of 0.7 when it is reverse bias but it has not yet reached the breakdown voltage that is 10 volt then it is acting as a reverse bias diode a simple reverse bias signal diode and when the voltage across this inner diode crosses slightly tends to cross this vz then it's starting as the starting as act, start starts acting as a constant voltage source maintaining a voltage of 10 volt across it this is the point of the entire discussion this is what i want to convey is this clear to everybody yes sir this was the catch in the question this was the catch i was expecting uh, somebody to get okay <clears throat> so everybody has understood the question i mean uh, sort of what do you think uh, are, are you clear with the concept okay anu what do you think Raghavan, are you are you sure are you convinced with the solution? Yes, sir. Okay. So you you have no doubt. Uh, nobody has doubt in it. No, sir. Clear. Okay. Sai Mega, uh, I am not getting any reply from Sai Mega. I don't know whether she is attending or not. Anyways, so so that was it. Uh, so these were the two questions I wanted to discuss. Uh, second questions are. So there would be uh, one last class uh, on 27th. I need to go back home. I, my father had to go through a surgery again. So uh, last class, maybe I will be rescheduling it. Maybe some Monday or Tuesday, I would be asking uh, our NPTEL people to reschedule that. So you get to know that from NPTEL portal, I guess. I, 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 mean, I do not have any communication channel to you. I mean, I cannot communicate you uh, in any way. I do not have any portal for doing that. So I think I would be uh, conveying the message to uh, some of the NPTEL people and I would uh, tell them to convey uh, you. And I hope you are practicing the mock test which uh, NPTEL or any other source uh, is providing you. Uh, that is important. So how, how are you um, How are you doing with it? Are, are, you, are you practicing mock tests? Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. Okay, then uh, let's end the session today. We will be meeting Thank again you, soon. Uh, I, I would let you know, I mean, individual people will let you know when uh, when we would conduct the next session. And that session would be the last session. I mean, uh, so so your gate is uh, knocking at the doors. I hope you people are prepared well. And I hope to see you at IISC, I mean, uh, in this year. Uh, thank you very much for joining and have a nice weekend. Thank you, sir.